Coming up this week on Kiss My Collectibles, we talk with Nicholas Buckland and the brand new hottest brand in the land book. Stay up to date with the show and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Become a member of our brand new Patreon and receive exclusive updates and benefits. Uh, kiss my collectibles podcast but you knew that hello everyone and welcome to the next episode of kiss my collectibles i am one of your co-hosts jason herndon and with me as always is stevie nicks andrew scambatti joe lalich and joining us from the land down under is our good friend and contributor and creator of everything kiss.com and the author of the new book the hottest brand in the land, Nicholas Buckland. Hey, hi. I'm back. Yeah, he's back. <laughs> he's he's pay back no attention. in person. Yeah, pay no attention well, to the Australian subtitles. Exactly. <laughs> he finally, you, you finally got see. internet. They finally, they yeah, finally, finally got internet. They, they cranked it up. Finally. The kangaroo yeah. leaped over there with the wire, yeah. and he finally plugged We're it up in. To, That's right. Up to 2G now. So. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So we have a special episode this week. Um, we're just going to dive right into it, and uh, we're going to talk about Nicholas's new book, The Hottest Brand in the Land. But and, hey, before uh, before we get into that, make sure you like and subscribe us on Facebook, Instagram. We have a brand you. new Twitter. Don't forget, if you got some extra chump change laying around and you want to help the show grow, find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash kissmycollectibles. And then make sure you visit our website, kissmycollectibles.com. We're also on Facebook. We have these great Facebook groups that differ from our official page. So make sure you go in and do that. And if you want to look cool like all your friends, make sure you head over to Click T Shop with a K, clicktshop.com, to get an official T-shirt. See you later, guys. That's all we need you for, man. Good job. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> but appreciate that, Andrew. As yes. I said, we're gonna we're just gonna talk. You know, we're not gonna show anything new this week. We're just gonna talk about uh, Nicholas's new book. So let's dive right into what it, I'm, shall we? What, my my first question about the book, and I'm really curious about this. You know, all these books they have audio versions, and, and I want to know if Nicholas, if you're gonna record a sensual audio <laughs> version that that I can purchase because I would purchase that. <laughs> On, on uh, the page. I, I had I had not planned on that yet, but um, as you can hear from my voice, it, it, like I could think of nothing more soothing than than this voice <laughs> sending you to sleep at night. I would buy it. So, so well, it certainly sends my wife to sleep strangely, which is <laughs> anyway. Um... <laughs> In 1977, uh, no, Kiss released <laughs> <laughs> the on tour board game. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it had pieces. And dice. <laughs> there were there were four colors: red, <laughs> blue, black, aqua, and yellow. And yellow. <laughs> all right. So let's let's take a step all the way back. Yep. So when when did you get the idea for this book? Did it happen organically, or were you actually had you been planning for years to do a book like this, or were you just kind of looking around and going, "Hey, I've got all these collectibles." Let's let's make a like what what was the genesis of this whole thing? It's a fascinating process to me. Well, yeah, I mean it was it was a funny one that uh, it, it it sort of started from me going through and realizing uh, from reading all these forums how little information I'd actually had on everything Kiss on the um, the vintage stuff. Like I actually kind of went through and went that's kind of wrong. That's not full, that's not right. And I was kind of thinking is this this really isn't the I want to be able to expand on this. Um, and strangely, to mention another Kiss book, um, Ross Radley's Magic, I, I had spent some early, very, very early days um, talking to him about uh, the design. We were talking, like, I think way before he linked up with Scott Davis, um, I had a conversation with him in 2016, possibly, about um, designing his book. Um, then before I knew it, it sort of the whole thing had changed uh, and he was going in a different direction but I, I it stuck in my mind because I, I was sort of pitching to him a very I want this clean beautiful coffee table book like something that you just want to have in your collection um something that sort of lives alongside the vintage collections uh I don't know just I've, I've just always been fascinated by art books and coffee table books and just things that were really beautiful 
And that's kind of what I was pitching to him for his book. And he decided he wanted to go in a different direction. But I thought, actually, that's not a bad idea. And like, I was wondering if I could sort of merge the two of, um, you know, just suddenly have some one place where you set the record straight on all this stuff. There's been like so many back and forth. I love the conversations in all the forums. And there were people just always coming in with get like, you know, hey, I've got a, let's pull it out for a second, you know, I've got a notebook but my one's got teen scene on it. Another one's got kiss right. on ice. I, I, I find that interesting. There's got to be a lot of other people that find that interesting. And I think, I think that's kind of what this, this book is, but it's, it's not just the little details. It's the absolute coolness of just this era. Like mm -hmm. I, I love the graphic design of the seventies. I love the, you know, the fact in, in a lot of cases, you know, like my good friend, um, Ace over here. A lot, a lot of it was very like hand drawn. There was a lot of um, painted, illustrated work on a lot of the artworks. Like nowadays, it's all photography, but I quite like that whole. I don't know it's just it's something magical from that time. Um, well, it takes you back. But I just to wanted to bring back. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, I wanted. I always keep saying on the promotion, it's a big warm hub, hug of nostalgia, and that's what I want it to be. You open it up and you go, "Damn, I'm in the '70s here. I remember that." I remember seeing that. I remember mum took me to the or mom took me to took me to the store yeah. and you know and <laughs> and I saw that hanging up. I remember that at JC Penney's. I want to I want to sort of yes, it's a, it's a collection of all the greatest coin and memorabilia, but also it's a hopefully there's a few moments for every single Kiss fan who buys this book will have that. I remember that, or I remember a story that goes along with that when I bought it. So yeah, that's that, that's that, that's really cool and that's really interesting. Uh, the first thing, the first question that came to my mind when I heard that you were doing a book and, and then that the book was actually happening, I, I, I always wondered, did you take any inspiration from Kistory 2? Because if you look at Kiss's vast library of official books, unofficial books, and, and, and all these other projects, there really isn't anything that's merchandise specific aside from Kistory 2, which I personally didn't mm -hmm. think was that well done. So did you take any inspiration from Kistory 2? I actually have never seen Kistory 2. Um, the I have I, interestingly own. enough, I've only heard, you know, I've only heard the things mm -hmm. that people don't like about it and that it's kind of derided anytime books are talked about, especially any sort of merchandise books, uh, but just Kiss books in general. I think Kistory One was so well received yeah. and everybody just mm -hmm. seems to universally pan Kistory Two. And I've never even opened, I've never even cracked the cover either. I think um, from from memory, I then went and found a YouTube video of someone flicking through every single page, and it, it was all over the shop. It was it looked like you know stuff from the '90s. It was like sort of prototypes, and it was like a bit of vintage stuff, and, and some of it just looked like really bad quality. And then all of a sudden, you had girls from Playboy sort of stuck in this. It was it was kind of like it, lo it looked like everything was jammed together. So I, I know there's been a few comments where people say, isn't this Kistory 2? No, this is nothing like Kistory 2. This is right. this is really, I mean, the original, it does cover 1973 to 76 and then at the very tail end, 81 to 83. But this is really a window of 1977 where they start, where they, it started to pick up in the States. It, it got absolutely huge where it was total media everywhere in 78 there started to be a dip in 79 and then bang we were back in australia in 1980 and it's really that window of those four years and in fact it originally i was just going to say i just want to do those four years and it was only when uh, i think um was it lynn um not lynn christopher what's the other lynn one goldsmith. lynn goldsmith, lynn goldsmith. Did, did, yeah, she called her book 1977 to 1980 i went oh, okay you know i'll I think around when I heard that was coming, I sort of went, oh, I've kind of, I kind of, I can't leave 73 to 76 out and I can't leave that sort of tail end of it out either. Um, even, even though that creature stuff really isn't like you call it the old coin era, but it it's really not. isn't. I mean, he was, he was out of there by then and, and they all say 1982 kiss organization on them. So it's not even really a coin uh, merchandise. Sure. So you, so you mm. start everything kiss.com. Right, you're starting to sort of get all of these items together. You're on forums. You're talking to people. You have these discussions about the book. When when do you start actually formulating this thing and and trying to decide? Okay, what's this going to cover? Um, what am I going to put? What's going? What's the content going to be? Because we know that there's um, all it's all official stuff. You wanted to keep it to things that people could actually go to the store and buy. So what's that thought process like as you're working through it? Is it is it things that you had around you or just talk about that a little bit? Yeah, look, I think I've, I've worked in publishing for about 20 something years. So I've got a lot of photographer friends and one, one of the guys was talking about his light tent and I was thinking, Oh, I'd love to just, 
you get some really amazing photos of this stuff. Uh, um, so I borrowed a camera from him, borrowed a light tent, brought it home, and just that was almost the genesis of the book was way before I actually wrote anything down and started actually being the author of this book was actually just playing around with photos. And I just think, oh, what, how, how, would, how great would it look if you had – because he'd, he'd shot a few things where he had this plastic perspex floor and it gave this lovely reflection on it. So I thought, how good would Kiss products look in there? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I just started – sort of, it was almost in a weird way. It's a book that started its genesis from the, the graphic design and the photography. That's I, so I that the information, but it wasn't really it, – it, it was meant to be – and I think that's – I hope one of the things that people say is this is really beautiful when did, they say it did um, you ever that's... did you ever think that you weren't going to have as much text as you have because i mean wh- what a lot of people don't know and they will know once once they get the book and, and they will know that that when they're able to pre-order the book that this is more than just pictures there's actual there's a story that that's weaved in here uh, which is actually a, a very good story i was actually really surprised by all the information that you had you gathered was there ever um a thought that it was going to be just photos and just an art book. And I'm only mentioning that because Joe has shown a lot of his collection that he has books that are just that. Did you ever think mm-hmm. that this book was going to be just that and not really have any words or any quotes or anything else but pictures? Well, there's a book um, that probably one of my biggest inspirations for this, if you were to say, what is another book that's very much like this? And I don't know how many of you guys are Star Wars fans out there, but there's a guy called Steve Sansweet, who is one of the biggest, he, he runs Obi, Obi Ranch, Rancho, Rancho Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. Rancho Obi-Wan. Yeah. So he, he has this absolutely, he's a, <clears throat> like a older gay man with this unlimited, um, that's not, that's not that funny. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I just uh, think it's, it's funny that that's the thing that you mentioned because I, I've talked no, about no, no, him. I've, I've talked about him I'll so tell many you times. why. I'll, yeah. t- I'll tell you why that this is important is because um, not not being married and being single, um, he, he doesn't have someone to say, please stop spending. So okay. he's got this um, massive... Um, <laughs> <laughs> like I am. <laughs> um, so he's got he's got this massive kind of warehouse. It used to be a chicken coop, like a yes. uh, sorry, a chicken yes. warehouse and stuff. Exactly. And it's fully converted. He's got everything. Like it it blows it blows Jean's collection out of I the just, water. It's, I, I it's just laugh because I, I've talked to probably three dozen people about Rancho Obi Wan, and, and yes, I, I know he's gay or whatever. I, that it's never ever ever come up. Because I, I don't care about that stuff, but that's why yeah. I laugh because that was like you know here here's fact number one about about this guy. I, thought, <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I probably I probably should have just said single single man um, <laughs> without, without someone saying no no you shouldn't be spending that because he 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 now no longer um he 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 no longer actually I think. I don't think he does his ordering too. He's he's got a librarian. He's got someone who orders, someone who unpacks from him. He just sort of now turns up and does a few unboxing videos, and that's it. Well, anyway, he's almost so like the, an unofficial the, archivist. The point. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the the he actually worked for Star Wars for a while. Um. But anyway, the point of my story was that he he did this book called A Thousand and One uh, Collectibles from a Galaxy Far mm-hmm. Far Away, which is which is, which is pretty which 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 is an the most amazing book, and it pretty much is this book. You know, in in a lot of ways, it, this is the Kiss version of that book. So he had the beautiful photos, and he had enough text which gave you information on it. So it was, you know, I thought I thought why I said each each entry has to be as much information as I have. So so there's a few things there where you know it's a T-shirt from 1981. There isn't much more to say. Where did it come from? You know, describe it. But there are things which just have full stories and and getting the access to. Um, the great Julian Gill gave me access to all the old um, or coin uh, bootwell, um, what, what do you call it? Uh, all the all, all all the all the stuff, the office memos, the information, the sales mm-hmm. charts, and everything like that. So I actually had all the little back and forths, you know, between those two. It was actually quite funny because Ron Bootwell and and Bill Coin had a lot of funny going back and forth with their, they were very humorous towards each other. So, um, yeah, it was great to read all those. And I got a lot of information from that, actually, that I'd never knew before. <clears throat> so speaking to that, when you're going through and putting this book together and you're reading all of these different factoids and stuff, what what was one of the more surprising things that you yes, d- good discovered question. Good question. Um, while putting the book together? Um. Dead air. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> I'll come. I'll come back to that one. I, okay. I, I'm just, Fair I'm enough. Just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to. I'm just 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 trying to think of 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 one where I just look. There was there was a lot of stuff which um. I think I think 
the things that I enjoyed the most were the stuff which is still up in the air. There's a few products in there which we still, no one can still decide whether they're official. No one can still decide whether what the story is. And there's, there's been so many pages and pages of people going back and forth. And one of them was the microphone and toy amp of whether right. that is a legitimate thing. Some people say they are, some people say they aren't. Um, and there's the um, 1977 mirrors, which is, um, right. there was two of them. There was the destroyer and you can kind of see them way at the back there in the yep. corner. No, you probably can't because there's four of us, but um, uh, no, the, um, yeah, but, so they came out in 77, but they did release a brochure, which suddenly said, we're with Kiss. And they released or had all these really bad kind of mirrors, really bad drawings. Um, there were circular ones. Um, so some people say because they got the license, there that makes them all official. Um, I'm saying that it, they none of them had any Kiss logo on them, including the Love Gun or <clears throat> Destroy It one. And then they put that on there um, when they got those two made official. And right. somehow I, I know I know John Hadges, who was on, had a, a box which said had an coin stamp on it. But I don't know if that was just them trying to flog. Those right. extra mirrors, anyway. They look like so. I I personally found that kind of stuff interesting. Is is going deep into who who the people were and you know and, and what the story was behind them, you know whether whether that um, you know like this this belt. Right. This is a like a. It looks so bad. I mean the this, the illustrations are pretty. Looks very bootleggy. The um the logo is not correct. Yeah. But then but then there are so many people who said I bought that in jc penny when i bought the rest of the image clothing stuff right. my, i bought it because my mum bought me them at the same time which is so they're swearing to god that you know that 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 is an actual official piece of uh, official item so i i do i found actually the most interesting is the stuff which i didn't solve so there's lots of stuff mm. i did solve but actually i still find the stuff which i go i still am not 100 percent certain right. what the story is behind that so yeah but that's, that's just me I, I i kind of like the hunt for the information so because someone who's written it, it's all in there for you guys to read. You've got all these great stories you didn't know before. Whereas I've read it all because I've been working on it for two years. I'm, I'm my eyes are now focused on the stuff which I can't solve yet. Right, and, and that's and, and that's precisely why I asked that question because that's the stuff that I find most intriguing. And mm -hmm. all of our back and forths, you know, a lot of people may not realize we're on Facebook with each other all the time, just chatting back and forth, sending photos. Yeah, unfortunately, sending photos to each other, sending proof to each other and you know and, mm. and i just it's intriguing to me having those conversations and i and i i love that all of that is kind of spelled out and still open-ended in the book you know because you know you got to shut it off sometime even if you can't find the yeah the the final answer so uh, I, it's, I think it's, that, it's amazing oh, sorry. i was going to say i think that's one of the brilliant things about the book right you can take it and sort of flip through it and look at the pretty pictures because there's mm -hmm. tons of yes. them in there. And it brings back all that nostalgia, and it's really cool. But you can also decide to start drilling down as deep as you want. I mean, I know that there's there's parts in there where you're talking about a tag on a shirt or there's, you know, it can get into the as much minutia as you want as a collector, right? If you're a big-time heavy collector or if you're just a 70s nostalgia person you know and you enjoy collecting you know ephemera from the 70s then this could you know th this could be attractive attractive to somebody like that as well yeah, that, so i think that's that's, that's that's the brilliance of the book it's like it can be as surface as you want or you can you know it's actually a, a resource for kiss fans and collectors as well that that's an interesting point because um you know the, the kiss group it's very finite there's only there's only so many kiss fans that that are going to actually purchase this book um, and if you don't know, at this point of this current recording, the deluxe, the super deluxe versions, uh, have been sold out. So if you are waiting on pre-ordering, you know, make sure make sure you you get on that. Um, but what I think is interesting is even though the Kiss group is very finite, I think that this book could cross over into non-Kiss fan territory just as a resource of of '70s material. And if the book mm -hmm. doesn't cross over, I think information from this book could be cited in other 70s nostalgia projects. People say, oh, I looked in this book to find out this piece of information. And, and that's what I find so interesting um, a, a about this book because it, it's not, uh, of course, the Kiss book. Everybody knows that. But I think some of the information in here could cross over. To, yeah, I mean, to, to I mean definitely. I mean, I mean, definitely. I mean, I bought that, as I was mentioning, the Star Wars book, and I, I didn't collect a single thing of Star Wars. Yeah. But it, yeah. it, it was just so cool. But um, actually, I was, I was just thinking what one of the things that was the moment where things went, oh, I'm really onto something here was 
originally it was just say on one page it was just you know the whatever the 1976 chevy van or that and then i started went i should put the ads in as well like the or the promotional material related to that yeah. i was thinking oh i should put the yeah. merch sheet in <clears throat> oh wait a minute and, and then then you look at it and you go it looked it looked totally different on the merch sheet to this right. final product that. i go well, i better better compare those so it once once i started piecing that together it wasn't it was the beautiful photos but it was all the sub and i thought oh, i may as well put there was a store poster for that one i'll put that one in um you know oh it looked different in in this country so once i started piecing those little extra things in that so i went oh i'm really enjoying this you know so i think other people will too because of that absolutely mm-hmm. i've used this word before but there's a forensic quality to what what we're doing you know it's funny as kiss fans how deep down into the minutia that we can get but there are some people i think mike stone was one when we were talking to him uh, a couple of episodes ago about the about the records and label variations and all those kinds of things it's interesting how so many kiss fans get into that minutia and how how they kind of deconstruct things forensically you know and want to want to know about oh the the red back cover or or whatever it is you know um it's it's interesting it's interesting stuff and it's all laid out beautifully in the book for sure it's the same thing with star wars collectors there was a variation in the 90s of open and closed hand and dot hand and and you know line hand boba fett you know people i mean there's sure there's i mean it's not yeah. it's not just kiss fans i mean there's a, a huge community for uh mm-hmm. for, for stuff like this because when you're a fan of something just the stuff isn't enough for you there's a ton of ocd but, but, people out there so. yeah yeah but but don't, don't you think one of the fun things about being a collector is just how no one has all the information everyone has got little pieces of information that they all share and that's how you learn and i think i think with this book as well i'm not sitting here you would ever say I know the most about everything. I just always said this book was everything that I learned and I'd ask people and I'd get ring them up or, or speak to them. I go, well, what do you think about this? And is this? And they go, oh, do you know that this, ca- I have found, I've got another version of this. I go, ah, and I'd speak to someone else and they'd have another right. bit of information. So mm. this is almost like a pulling together of everyone's knowledge. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so if, you, if you have this book, you suddenly got it in front of you. You go, I, I've got, you know, maybe, I, I had about 60 or 70 collectors or however many, you know, contribute to this book, but there was even more just from stuff I read um, and pieces of information they've given me. And no matter how small, all that made one big picture. So I, I, th- I think I think every, people are going, oh, wow, I didn't know that. On every page, I think you'll read a little thing where you go, I didn't know that little part before. There's uh, mm-hmm. There's been many other books that have been created, and I'm talking specifically in the KISS community, that whomever is spearheading the book, they always amass a lot more things that the book is on. While creating this book and while writing this book, did your collection grow at all? Um, if my wife's watching this, no. <laughs> but I didn't buy it. True, <laughs> I didn't think I think. That's that, that's great. So don't worry about that. She's probably never seen the episode. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's she good, walks that, in here. What the fuck? <laughs> that's green screen. That's all CG behind Nicholas. That's that's none CG. of that's real. Yeah, CG. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Well, actually, funnily enough, to our to our right is the laundry. So she has to walk through here every single day um, sure with the laundry so, yeah. with a laundry basket. Yeah, um, yeah. Which I then find um, kiss jackets fallen on the floor. She's like, walk past, them, knocked them over, like fuck this stuff, you know. So gonna... <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> no, 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 no. Seriously, I, I asked that question because th- there have been people that that have created books, and then once the book is written, they're like, well, I don't need to own all this stuff anymore. So, did your collection grow, and will your collection maybe dwindle now that the book project is over? Talk about that a little bit. You're trying to buy my collection, are you? No, no, no. Yeah. The, um... the, the shipping, the shipping will kill me on there. Yes. <laughs> and um, but, but but no, I, I'm just I, well, I'm curious about that. Well, I don't know. As as a collector, I sometimes have I have these bizarre fantasies about uh, murdering. No, about um these Whoa. bizarre bizarre. F- <laughs> Sorry, it's getting it's serial killer down here. I <laughs> know. Uh, I, I, of these. <laughs> I, <laughs> of murdering yeah. Joe in his well, sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in yeah, his yeah. Sleep, yeah. No, I, I um. I have these kind of fantasies where I go, what if, what if I didn't do Kiss? Because I've got, I got a lot of favorite bands. Like Queen are actually my favorite band of all time, musically speaking. I probably listen to Queen far more than I do. I grew up being an absolute obsessive ACDC fan, like down to like being obsessed about those really early lineups, pre-Bond, Scott. And, it's all the same you know, song, all those, though. Well, but the yeah, song is good. Yeah. yeah, it's a very good song. No, but... um. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I like and uh, and I love Pink Floyd as well. And I always thought, what if I was like like almost like sliding doors or alternate reality when you started buying that first Kiss stuff? You go, now I've entered into the Kiss community, and all my friends are the Kiss 
fans online. But you go, what if I'd have bought, I don't know, a rare 1977 thing from Pink Floyd and then I got another one because I'm a collector and then I got another one, I got another one, I suddenly, I'd gone down a different path. So you, 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 you kind of, I, I sometimes have those days where I go, yeah, maybe may, maybe this is done, maybe, or, or, or I say, well, what if I just did originals only? So anything from 1980, that's trash now, like this ice cream box gets not trash but i would sell it for a lot of money but uh you know what i mean like I just, do, I, 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 I just do you know collect the original band or i, I don't know just change it up there, there may come a point where you you just suddenly go um i'm not enjoying this as much as i am but at the moment i'm really enjoying it so um it's staying for a while what nicholas is saying is that he's got 46 rooms in his house there's a queen room there's yep. an ACDC room, and they look just like that in each room. And his wife has to travel this horrible funhouse <laughs> gallery of rock and roll <laughs> to get to the kitchen or to the bathroom. Yeah. So, I'm just, so I'm, you've just got me fantasizing about that now. Oh, no. Oh, but no. I don't think there's enough stuff from, the, like, you mentioned all these bands that uh, have extensive music catalogs and probably extensive B side catalogs, too, because we've talked that Kiss is never a B side band. Mm hmm. But up until recently, and, and I say recent because within the last 10 or so years, there's you can buy ACDC shoes and Pink Floyd shot glasses. You, you, people put out these mm -hmm. chunkies. Yeah, yeah, all this stuff, yeah. yeah, all this stuff. Like the, all, and I think the company's called Junk Food at one point in time. You, mm -hmm. Like, as far as I know, there, was, there wasn't Queen dolls in the 70s. Or you couldn't get nah, a no. Pink Floyd trash can, but you can get a Kiss one. No, nah, but... I'm I'm sure their collector rooms are full of um, in-store posters, um, yeah, you sure. know, point of sale, um, the records, and I, I, I'm just assuming if they're not collecting the charts and they're doing the older stuff, it's just you know old tour programs. But yes, it probably wouldn't look like any of these collections. It'd probably be tour books, and yeah, it wouldn't get to the level of Kiss really. So let's uh, let's speak to putting the book together. You know, you've got all the information. You start putting the book together. Um, you know, a lot of people may not realize it and I, I want to mention it, but you know, you and Joe collaborated on, um, mm. on this book at, at some point in time, y'all discussed getting together and, and working on the book. Y'all want to talk about how that relationship happened and, um, you know, what you, well, you know, as much as you want to share. It's, it's funny. I think, um, I think just being in the Facebook community from I was thinking about it the other day and trying to remember exactly how this all <laughs> how this all snowballed on us, Nicholas. But um, I know you were working on the book and you had been showing prototype sort of comps, Photoshop comps and things that you had put together. of, Hey, this book is coming. I think I just very innocently reached out and said, hey, man, I think this is a badass looking book. And I think it has the opportunity to, to maybe be the prettiest book, kiss book that's ever come out. Um, and I think it started as simply as that. I think it was just a compliment from my perspective, talking to Nicholas and saying, I think you have something really special on your hands here. Um, to my to my recollection, that's how it started, right? Mm, yeah, I think I think so. I, I think I think you um, you sort of you got me at a point there where I'd, it had taken quite a while. I was probably a little burnt out because you know writing the whole thing, collecting all the information, and designing the whole thing. I, there probably aren't too many people doing this stuff where you're doing all three of them now i've been yeah. a graphic designer for a long time but right. at that point i i think i was almost saying to you like i've looked at this so much <laughs> and because i'm so deep into the to the stories and the words behind it i can't even tell if this looks good anymore and i think i got it to a point but I, it was just it was just magic to have a, like another great designer just to go to bounce something off and just go actually you know what i do i'd you know bring that back in i'd do that so it was almost like I, there was no ego for me there. I, I was just kind of going. At this point, I need help because I can't. Yeah. I can't tell whether this looks like I, I knew it looked good, and a lot of fans would say it looked good, but it didn't look great. And I think <clears> that's the thing Joe Joe has done for the book. He's taken it from this level and taken it to that real next level where it's actually a thing of beauty now. It, it's it was good, always it's good, but, but it's, it's, it, it looks really beautiful now. So yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't did. thank Joe enough for his help. You know been amazing oh, yeah i appreciate being involved for sure I, it did feel at the time like a little bit of a baton like i was taking the baton in a way because i remember having some discussions with you where you were like i can't even look at this thing anymore only because as a designer it's hard to explain to people you know sometimes you'll see typos get through on a poster 
And people will say, well, how did that ever get through? And it can be one word and it can be misspelled, right? But as a designer, you're looking at these things as shapes, right? And as and as visual color, you're not really looking at them as the word for what it is. And I think, Nicholas, you had gotten so far down the rabbit hole, you've been working on this thing for so long, what, two years maybe at that point or a year yeah. and a half at least, something like that for sure, yeah. of shooting all these photos and doing all, you know, doing all this work on your own that I think it had maybe become a little bit of a vortex. And you had gotten so far into the woods where you felt, when I hit you up, you maybe sort of felt like, gosh, I could really use a fresh set of eyes on this thing. Yeah, exactly. To tell, exactly, me, yeah. It, to tell me if this is even good or not <laughs> anymore. Because I, you know, you couldn't. Mm. It felt like you couldn't tell. You know. See, I think I think if I'd shown like a lot of other Kiss fans, they would have said, "Yeah, it looks great, man." But For that's sure. not really. I I, 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 I think they would have just got excited by the, by the merchandise and the stories. I was going. I need someone to look at this with a critical design eye. Not not to right. say that yeah. that pro that Kiss product looks good. I forget that there's Kiss product. As Joe said, it's just a shape. It needs to say, right. and he's just looking at it going, "That's." not enough white space or you shouldn't have these things on angles. And it was some really quite nice little tweaks that they were so small, but they needed to then be built out across the entire book. So it was almost like not a start again moment, but it was, oh, wow, if we're going to make this thing a premium, amazing product, not just a cheap little book, then, you know, we, we have to do this. And it did take time. I remember it was like a start again moment. But yeah. It was great. Yeah, and it, and it did. Yeah, it was a little bit of a reset, and it was interesting that it was it was almost our love for coffee table art books that brought us together mm -hmm. more than Kiss. You know, it was mm -hmm. me looking at what you had done and thought, God, this thing looks great, and it's going to be the coolest Kiss book ever. Like you said, without me ever even touching it, you know, seeing the Facebook stuff that you had put out there, I was like, man, this is great. I just want to reach out to this guy and say, this looks killer, and I'm so excited for it. You know, um, so I think that was the genesis of where it all started. And then, yeah, like Nicholas said, it was a little bit of a, a reboot, but it's it was only like a ten or twenty percent tweak that we did to it. I mean, the book was the book was there. Um, it was just kind of mm. taking it and formatting it and and getting everything to kind of quiet down and and you know. Speaking of where the book is, Nicholas, why don't you tell our listeners where they can get the book right now? Because we've been talking about this book. Tell them where they can pre-order the book. Tell them where they can get this great book for themselves. Yep. So the the book, um, which we'll probably put up on screen, is um, hottestbrandbook.com. Uh, uh, that's that's the URL. Um, and at the moment, you can order two versions. The the autographed uh, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley version sold out very very quickly uh, this morning, actually. Uh, so there's the deluxe copy left, which you, you can get uh, with it. It comes in a special silver cover, uh, silver foil cover with a sticker. And you get a poster, and there's one of four collectible uh, postcards, and they'll be randomly inserted into the book uh, <laughs> for you. <laughs> <laughs> <Proctolid>. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I wish I wish um, I would have gotten that yeah, version. Yeah. I wish I would have gotten that. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that <laughs> the proctologist. Version. Yeah, the proctologist version. I'll call it. Yeah. Um, that's a pri private joke. That one. Uh, <laughs> Very uh, private. Yeah. So it's, yes. Um. But so th there's that, and then then I mean the st the, the stand the standard book is absolutely fantastic anyway. So <clears throat> deluxe standard doesn't matter. You're getting right. you're getting um a gr a great book. It's um, it's definitely it's, made it's, by it's beautiful. A true you'll kiss you'll fan. love it. It's definitely made by mm. a true kiss fan because true. there may be those collectors that are going to collect all four of those postcards that are randomly inserted into the book. You know, I, I got a mm. flashback to 1998 when some of the CD singles for Psycho <clears throat> Circus they were turned in, and you had to look in there and see which one of this so you can get all four of them. Um, but uh, but no, it's cool. So make sure you head on over to hottestbrandbook.com to pre-order your yeah. copy today. And, and and really support this great book support support nicholas um this is going to go towards his divorce fund because after you know the, the collection is going to grow and his notoriety is going to grow he's going to buy more kiss stuff and then his wife's going to have less room right. to do laundry well, we already decided what i'm doing with this it's, it's building the queen acdc and pink floyd rooms <laughs> that's, that's right, right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um yes so yes <clears throat> well tell me tell me one thing we talked about what you found in the book tell me one thing if you can, if you can spread this, out, tell me one thing that you couldn't find for the book that you wanted to include. Ah, okay. There's a few, a few little things which I don't have a picture of. Um, there's things. There's what what you guys don't realize and what I didn't realize is existing in this world where we exist. <clears throat> there's this another upper echelon of kiss collectors who just don't do Facebook. 
and they exist. And right. I think um I think sometimes John Hadges can <clears throat> jump up and 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 touch that group, and 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 I think he's part of it. And it's, it's some secret kind of um what's the thing the the little dot the the thing with the, the Illuminati. The Illuminati. I think, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I think I think I think it's, a, it's an Illuminati version of Kiss Collectors, who um who have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Um, and they they will ne- and and they just said they don't want to share it. And I totally understand boot, uh, people bootleg stuff these days. Yeah. Right. So having it in the book, it, there could be a chance of it getting bootlegged. But there is um, well, I think I showed you this the 1978 uh, uh, disco shirt. But apparently there is also a disco vest and a disco pants which go really? with it. I think, I think they're white. And John Hadges has seen it. But I've asked and I've asked and the through the contacts and this pigeon flew into my room and I finally got the message th- from Winterfell that um, it was not allowed to be um, not allowed to be photographed or shown. And there's a, f- there's a few other little things, especially around the clothing stake, which just, I- I've mentioned everything. So e- everything that I know exists is in the book, but there's a <clears throat> two, there's two or three items which were not photographed for that very reason. Cause um, apparently they're so simple from what I'm told is, you know, some of this stuff like like the um the denim vests are really just blue denim vests with a red kiss logo. Got so it. I was told some of this stuff could be very replicable if it got out there. And these mm. collectors, they like for us, we like to show our collections, post it on Facebook. For them, they've got zero interest. Um, a guy in there's another guy in um Detroit, Joe Marshall, yep. who everyone knows. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, he he was he was one of the person people who also uh, turned down. A request to have some of his stuff in the book which is totally his prerogative you know he doesn't have to have it in there and i totally again understand he's got some one-of-kind stuff which has never been photographed or never been out there and he didn't feel like he wanted it in there um so yeah but all that stuff's mentioned so what i know exists is in the book just not not visually did you ever right. think that you were maybe gonna that the book was going to go a different direction and you were going to show other people's collections. Was that ever on the table at all? I don't know. I've, I have thought about that one because um, I'm revamping everything kiss at the moment. We have a collectible section, a collector's section. I don't know. You never know. That could make a a good book two, book three, book four. Who knows? Speaking of the world, that was going to be one of my questions. So uh, one of the more collectible sides of, of kiss collecting is, 70s promo stuff and uh Mm. some of the things that are not you know included in the book um like you didn't include kiss army kits correct yeah so basically the way the way i had to have like a narrative so the narrative behind this is if you were a kid in the 70s you Mm. should have been able to purchase this so you should have been able to this is everything that you would have seen and and got um the kiss army kits for me They could have gone in, but there were so many variants that I just I just thought it would start to get boring. But right. a, a lot of the, a lot of the content from the Kiss Army kit, kits are in, but not the actual sure. kit itself. I left out a lot of the record promos um, mm-hmm. and right. those kind of stuff for, for that very reason. I go because that's become a collectible thing. That that would be a book about collectors. This is a book about seventies Kiss merchandise that you bought as a kid. So this is, this is again, that window into the seventies and eighties. So I, I felt that takes you more into, you know, record company stuff and also like a good marketeer, you know, I've got to have something left for book two. Right. That's yeah. I just, that's what I was trying to get at. <clears throat> do you already have ideas lined up for Would you even books? want to do another book? Or is it still, is it still um, exciting for you? There, there are actually lots of um, projects on the way, which I don't really want to talk about. But um, yeah, there's a there's a few things that we're also pitching to Kiss soon, as well. Um, as a few, few more official projects too. So to that point, let's talk about. So you're working in obscurity in Australia, right? Um, and all of a sudden, you get some interest from from the Kiss camp. Is that something you want to talk about? You can you can illuminate yeah, yeah, sure. as to how yeah. this book. Because now there was there was a long time where you were teasing. You were saying it's coming. I promise it's finished. It's coming. But right. there's a big announcement that we can't make yet. The, the book is on the way. We promise. And um, yeah. So then mm. all of a sudden the big announcement is made. And 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 what? How did that all come about? 
Yeah, well, that was actually back in September. So, I mean, Gene follows everything Kiss on Twitter. So he he's retweeted us a few times and liked things that were put up. So I know that his eyeballs are at least against it. And I, I it, it was literally, I think, the day after I put up the cover as it was. So it's pretty much the same cover you've got now, but it was it was just the hottest brand in the land, big without the Kiss logo. And the day after that, I got I got. Uh, the letter from their legal team. A season to say, say, like yeah. Done, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it, was a, it, it, it was, it was, it was. Would you, would, you, would you like to, would you like to make this an official book? And you know, it, it, it wasn't something I was ever going to do. Um, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I was never going to chase it because I thought this book could e- equally work as, as an unofficial book. But of course, you know, when someone says they want to make it official, I thought. Well, let's do that. So yeah, all all of a sudden it was official, but all of a sudden it. So that was September, and then I couldn't reveal this until I had the contract, and the contract took a very long time, as Joe knows. Just and that, and that had a lot to do with the end of the road tour. Mm-hmm. They were very busy, um, and to put to put to put the contract. But as as I, when I spoke to their legal team, they said, "Don't worry, we've got a bunch of other people also." waiting for for their letters so i didn't didn't feel like it was a personal um hold up for any reason other than just getting getting the guys to focus on a book right. at, at that period at that period of time it was really just to get them to fill out the contract details so it took ages before we could actually officially release it which is why i was kind of always hinting it or showing a little corner of the kiss logo but i could never ever say it i think i think most people had guessed by the time i um sure. by the time i could finally show that cover mm. There, there have been other books that have been teased that have done crowdfunding, that have said pre-order this book, that have gone to Pledge Music. Did you ever think about going that way? No, no, I didn't. I, I just didn't want to do it that way. I, my, uh, I don't. I don't. Can't really speak for what other pe- how other people do it. But you, you have to also remember, um, this project didn't require um, a huge amount of funds to get it set up. I had photographer friends, uh, you know. I, I bled Joe dry when he should have been working on the stuff he was actually being paid for. Uh, you know, I, I do, I do that I, I, daily. Yeah, yeah. Funnily um, enough, that I'll, has I'll, never I'll... happened to me before ever <laughs> on any other kiss <laughs> official or unofficial yeah. kiss related okay. project. That's never happened. So, uh, <laughs> take it away, Nicholas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you've, you've lost my train of thought. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, what were you talking about? I've totally forgotten. I actually yeah, I think, literally I, have forgotten what we're talking yeah, about. I think we've all forgotten. <laughs> so, no, it's just, it's just there, there have been so many books that have come out that, that have pushed this crowdfunding, oh, crowdfunding. thing. Oh, crowdfunding. And then, That's and right. then, and then That's what, what was excellent about this book is you said it was coming for a long time, but you never you, – you, you sort of held back some of the best information. And then you know, for mm. someone, who look, had, look. someone who hadn't followed you, it just pops up you know, a, a day or two mm-hmm. ago, and here it is. So yeah. it's uh, – I think – just speaking as a, a, a bum off the street, I think this was the correct approach True. to doing. This was the correct approach <laughs> I didn't, I, to doing yeah. something like this. I think, I, th- I think what I was was trying to say before is be, because I didn't require mm-hmm. a crowdfunding fund to do this. Um, everyone was there. Were so many um, Kiss Galaxies that were so generous in giving me access to all this information and right. and even some from photos from their collections. Um, I didn't. I didn't have to pay licensing fees, so I didn't have to raise any money. I, I just wanted to sort of go. I'm not going to take a dollar from people until this book is ready to go. So it went on pre-sale today. This book is going to the printers probably on Monday. Fantastic. So yeah, I, I just wanted it to work that way. But you know, I do. I would never uh, cast any dispersions on people who needed to do it a different way because yeah, I, every I wasn't, project's wasn't different in, and every uh, yeah yeah. I, I wasn't so. insinuating that. I just I think it's. For, for the, the novice out there who understand that there are many avenues to do projects like sure. this and not all yeah. projects require a, a huge amount of funds. So I definitely wasn't disparaging mm-hmm. anyone from yeah, deciding right. what they want to do with their project. But but for this yeah, project, I mean, you could this project you could head on over to hottestbrandbook.com to, to get your copy today. And and really make sure you do that because you know all of us here collectively have seen the whole book, parts of the book, have seen things that Nicholas has shown us, hasn't shown right. us. Uh, it, it's excellent. And I'm just not saying that because he's on the show and he's an actual co-host and he's a friend. 
I'm saying that this is something that's uh, that's really really cool. So uh, make sure you head on over there and uh, and pre-order this book because um, you know don't miss out. Don't pay secondary market prices on this because you're gonna wait for this or you know make sure Speaks. you. Uh, Speaking of that, Andrew, um, secondary market pricing. So, uh, can we speak to how many copies there there were of you know different mm. uh, tiers? So you, you had fifty of the super yeah. deluxe, right? Paul yeah, Stanley. Yeah, let's, that... let's take them one at a time yeah. and talk about yeah. what was mm. in each one of them. What makes each yeah. package different? What the price yes. is? How let's Please. let's do let's mm. talk about it that way. Okay, the the, the standard edition is is the three ninety page book and it that that one was for ninety nine dollars um ten by ten inches three hundred and ninety yeah, pages you big, yeah. 10 is the, big ten inch is yeah, that version limited at all or are you just no are you, okay. no that 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 is the version which will sell until i think we've got five or six year license on it so we'll sell that you know that, that one is never going to run out i think i i want every kiss fan to have this book so you know and I'm, I'm not just talking about for a financial point of view i just i just think it, it's a great book for every kiss kiss fan to have so that one won't run out um the the next version up was the deluxe which was the um the one with the, i mentioned before with the foil cover sticker poster and one of the postcards um that that one is uh 149 um that that one is, I think, limited to from memory. I think it's two hundred or two hundred and fifty copies. Um, I should know that, but yeah, it's late. <laughs> right. um, something Fair like enough. that, two hundred, two hundred fifty. But as as we speak, there are only it's getting close to only being a hundred of those ones left. So once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and then, of course, the deluxe package is the one that I'm getting signed when I fly over to meet the band in July or August. Um, probably July, I think, to get those done um, in LA and get and get the 50 copies signed. It, it was a little bit more, but again, it just everything's come down to the band's uh, schedules. So it was going to they were going to sign a lot more. It, it in the end, um, it got revised down to 50 copies. Um, they they said they may sign more in the future, but there won't be any more deluxe versions for them to sign. So any anything they sign in the future will probably be. If they sign more copies, they'll probably be standard copies. So there could be a fourth variant, technically, yeah. um, but not 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 through creation of my own, just through in case anyone wants to buy one that's autographed. But the actual deluxe book um, is the limited one, and that sold out within about an hour this morning. So, yeah, that's is, really good. Which is great. Which it, is weird. It's an amazing yeah. success story about a Kiss fan who just had a passion for collecting. Um, mm. from the ground up, and it happened organically. It's not like there was some grand scheme where you know, a graphic designer is going to pull the wool over everybody's eyes and create this book and make some money. It was never like that. It was this organic kind of process that, that um, I mm -hmm. admire you for. I mean, it's two, oh, maybe even three years now at this point that you have had the nose to the grindstone. And what people don't realize is that authors, designers, Anybody who creates this kind of material, um, people in movies uh, like Andrew has been, they don't realize the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes. And to Andrew's point, you know, he said, then this thing just shows up. Well, for for Nicholas and all of us involved, it didn't just show up. This is years of hard work. Yeah, passion, but I meant I meant for them because there there are other projects where yes, people talk yeah, about no. it to the point of nausea, and you're like, all right, give me the damn thing already. Uh, but right. this just this mm. just shows up, and I think that's that's the way to do it. You know, yep. it's yeah. I mean, I, I can't commend you enough for this. Is this is the way that that all things should yeah. should should come? So I, I I'm super. Look, it's excited. been a, it. It has been a bit of a marathon, and there there have been times where I've just like I've even said to my wife, I've sat down. They go, I I, I spent two because I traveled two hours to and and back to work, um, in the city of Sydney. Once we moved, we moved to the mountains, and and I, there were some days where I just said. I can't read this thing anymore. And I do, I, I'm totally over, I'm just overloaded on this amount of information. And then somebody will say, Hey, did you know there was another variant? And I go, Oh, okay. Jump on the computer and I'll be back <laughs> on yeah. add, add, yeah. adding that in. I was like, I was like, it, it was like, it's like, it's like someone's reached out of the computer and gone, snap out of it. Just <laughs> <laughs> keep writing. It's like, so I'm back, back adding more and more stuff. But yeah, there, there were times where I was just like, so burnt out. I was going, I was even saying in the later stages to Joe, I said, I cannot, there's just so much in here, which is great for you guys buying it. But for me, reading it every single day again and again, getting the – I've had it pre proofread by four proofreaders. Um, Are three of them one here? Of them is, yeah, three of them – no, three of them here. And, and one's an actual professional proofreader for my journalism days. 
<laughs> so, hey, I found so, some stuff. So I found did I. Some, yeah. So did I. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah. So just yeah, and, and and just just making stuff sure the stuff that I actually the chapters were actually wrote long passages were write them in. I work in social media as well, so I know how to string sentences together. But in terms of actually writing long passages, I'd never done a a Julian Gill style, you know, just basically long form copy. So so these intros are things that I'd actually. I knew I could do it, but I had never done it. So I needed a, a proper, someone who'd worked in journalism to actually go through and, you know, basically sub-edit it. There's, there's proofreaders and then there's actually sub-editors. So this thing's actually been through a sub-editor, thank God. So, Great. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I just want to say, Nicholas, you know, I, I've been chatting with you since the early days of Everything Kiss and, um, you know. They used to use I've telegrams. Te telegrams. Right. Smoke signals. Telegrams. Um, Carrier pigeons. 2006, yeah. 2006. Yeah. I, uh, I've always thought the world of you and, and I'm very proud of you and I'm very happy for you. Um, I'm proud to call you a friend and all the support that you've always given the groups that we started and, uh, the, just the, you know, working with you on these different Facebook groups and different things, podcasts and things that we do, man, I'm, I'm so happy for you and that this thing is finally done and that it's selling already selling well. And, uh, so congratulations. All right. So make sure you head on over to hottestbrandbook.com to pre-order your copy today. And don't wait on this. I know the official standard copy of the book is going to be in print until the licensing agreement lapses, but don't sit on this because there have been books that were published for long periods of time that you can't get now. Um, so don't don't sleep on this one. Make sure you head on over to the website, pre-order your copy today, and join join the fun. I mean, this is this is this was so cool. This is this invigorated Well, I will say, me. um, I will say you can sit on it because it's ten by ten inches. Don't sleep on it because it's really painful. So. <laughs> this is what this was the absolute worst thing about working with Nicholas. Um, and someday we'll 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 talk about the publishing name and what that all where all that all came from. Um, we'll keep that a secret for now, but um, it's it's very interesting how that all came about and Nicholas's absolutely horrific sense of humor. It hurt. <laughs> He's it a, hurts, Joe. It hurts Joe, Joe is a messages. patient, patient man. I actually, patient, I actually like it. That's, I like Nicholas more than I like the both of you because, like, we we would be we would be talking and then we would just start talking about hookers and then just because that's a sense of humor, you know, it's just I I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> now we're gonna have to edit this whole thing again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Where's the P tape? Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Man. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Nicholas, Nicholas, thank you, thank you so much for for joining us here and and talking about the book here. I really hope that now that the book is done and maybe you have a lull in projects that you can come back on the show and and, and make us laugh and and talk about how the toilet flushes the other way because um yeah. you know we we really we really you know I could speak to Jason. I can't really speak to this other man here. Um, but never uh, we, speak for me. We uh <laughs> we miss having you on the show. So I hope that after this book is a huge huge success that you uh you give us the pleasure of coming back again sure <laughs> sure a, yes. true, a true brother in arms you've become a friend yeah, i'm absolutely. super proud of you as we all are for this book so congratulations yep. um yeah. and we're very excited to see it hit the hit the shelves and hit the uh hit the postal boxes around the world yes Ab mm -hmm. absolutely cool. so thanks for having me on guys yes thanks for coming on nicholas good job fellas and if that is all for this evening is it morning. this evening? Good morning. This I mean, we're all, it's, all, in, it's, we're all in different places. It is somewhere. It's this evening for for Nicholas. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's about midnight right there. So, uh, yeah, all right. Close, yeah. We'll see you on the next one.